Welcome back to C2s and K5s. Today we're going to show you the electric steering motor that's out of a Kia Soul that I added to the truck so I have power steering in here now. Because as you know, it's a straight six, power, nothing, and I stumbled upon this on YouTube and I thought I would give it a try. So we're going to show you all what I have done and we're going to take it for a test drive. So a lot of people have been taking these electric motors out of like Toyota Prius, Toyota Corollas, I think Saturns, Nissan Versas. The, this one is a Kia Soul and it's a 2017 from what it says on the computer. So what I had done was I had been researching this and everybody wanted like $300 for a Prius motor and computer and I stumbled upon a video of a guy putting this in his sand rail well, I guess I should say sand rail, kind of like a dune buggy kind of thing. And it looked like a pretty good setup, so I decided to buy that. Now, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have because the computer mounted, like, down here, and it just wasn't going to work. There wasn't clearance for it, and I didn't want that computer this close to the exhaust manifold and getting hot and failing. So what i did was i took the steering shaft out of the truck and i kept that because this was kind of a working project so work on it take it back out you know drive it to work what have you so this is a coupler i got off of amazon i think for like 40 bucks this is like a 36 spline that will go on to the truck itself mounts up to the, the steering shaft the other side is a three quarter inch double d and it's got the set screws. This pin, the shaft that comes out of here, was like, I don't know, like 12, 15 inches long. So I cut it way down. So I wanted to get this as close as I could here. And then this outer piece here, I cut that down also. Then on here, this short, the shaft is like an inch, inch and a half long. I kind of ground the sides down and made it into a three quarter double D. This is a three quarter double D on both sides. And this was like 25 bucks. The website was like Johnny Law Motors or something like that. It was a way cheaper than everybody else and it's solid steel. Then I've got the three quarter double D and it sh fits into the shaft. So this can slide in and out and I can make this shorter or longer. And this was out of the 84 to 94 Jeep XJ, which I think is the same thing as a Cherokee. A lot of people in the 73 to 87 C10 K5 uh, group are getting rid of the rag joints and putting those on and it's basically just a bolt-in thing. It won't work as a bolt-in on the 67 to 72s, but I just ended up cutting the ends off. So the three-quarter double D goes down to this one-inch double D and then that goes into this rag joint that I got off of Amazon that's a one-inch double D here with the set screws and then it uh, bolts on to the factory shaft like this is all factory stuff here as you can see I had to cut out part of the fender well I did have the motor mounted about three inches about this way so that's why I have all these notches cut out here because it cut a little bit at a time so I wasn't just cutting out a huge chunk these are the original ones and they're not in the greatest shape but I, this is driver quality and like I've always said we're not we're not going to SEMA with this thing so Maybe in the future when I get new ones, maybe find a way to make some kind of sheet metal thing that can go around here to keep the water from getting into here and up here. It's Phoenix and it rains very, very little as you all know. And I'm not really too worried about it. And if I don't have to drive it in the rain, I won't. So that's where we're at with that. Now, another thing that was not the greatest setup was, so you've got three power wires coming off the motor here. Now, these wires here, these wires here, and these wires here all weren't just to the motor itself, so you had it all self-contained. So, I wanted the computer to be inside so it was safe from the heat and safe from uh, the elements. So I had to extend all of these, and I know it's not the greatest looking job in the world, but I really don't care. I'll, figure, I'll clean this up later. The one harness had seven wires the other one had six wires so i had to extend all of those in and then those three like fatter cables they all go into the computer 
And then the computer had a ground and a power that I brought out through the hole where my vintage air wiring is. That goes into here. I put a 30 amp breaker on it here and then fed that up to the battery. And then there's your, there's your ground wire. They say ground it to the battery. I, I still don't under, understand why you can't just ground it to the body somewhere else. But I'm going to go with that for now. So, next thing I'm going to show you is where the computer is. <clears throat> all those wires came in over there, and yes, I know it's a mess, but they all come in over here to the, the two brackets here, the two plugs here. And you can't get them mixed up because they don't, they're not the same, so like you can't get these mixed up and put them in the wrong spot, so you're good there. That's the plug with the, the three fat wires that comes in over there. This is the ground and power that goes to the battery. This up here is another plug that it doesn't come with, but there is eight pins, and all you need is the one pin, sorry, that is in the upper, like if you're looking at this, like this is the top, and that's the bottom, the top, all the way closest to here, the very first pin, I basically just bent the other ones, that, or no, I ran a wire in through the hole inside of here, open this thing up, it's real easy. It just has some folding pin, folding tabs, and I soldered it to that wire connection on the inside and then just filled this up with some, some um, RTV to keep that wire from being pulled out. This wire needs to be a key hot, so this goes over to my fuse box and that uh, gives you your signal. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna turn it on and we're gonna do it for our test drive because before it wasn't working and I realized my wire, my soldered connection here had come loose so I had to open this thing back up and fix that. So that's all back together. <clears throat> the rest of these wires are just for the stereo that I have not put back in. But when you turn the key on, you should hear a click come from this motor. So we're going to give it a shot here. And here's the key on. There it is. And hopefully you guys heard that little click. It was like two seconds in. All right, we're going to go for a little test drive and see what happens. a lot easier. Nice. You still kind of hear some grinding in the steering column, but... But that's always kind of been there. That grinding noise when you turn it. But, as you can see... when you're driving you've got to two hand this thing we'll see yeah, nice not perfect it's not like having regular power steering but this is vastly improved to be able to turn a corner like that with one hand is exactly what I'm looking for. I know it's not going to be perfect, but this is way nicer. I'm going to try and do it all one-handed if I can. Nice.
probably would have never attempted that with the uh, manual steering. I probably would have turned in the parking lot and made a big old loop. Just trying a U-turn like that with the manual steering is ridiculous.